Hi, everybody. Michael Brown here again. Welcome back to Educator.com's Adobe Photoshop Elements course. In this lesson, before we dig into the nuts and bolts and features and techniques of Photoshop Elements itself, I wanted to talk to you about a subject of vital importance, and that is the importance of quality. We're going to talk about my mantra for quality and how to always get the best possible quality you can in anything you do, not just Adobe Photoshop Elements. And then we're going to talk about setting up your camera to get the highest quality images you can out of the camera. That is from the settings within the camera, technically. And then I'm going to give you some photography tips based on my 35 years of location experience to help you capture the best quality images you can from a compositional point of view and an artistic point of view and also a quality point of view, the things that you can do when you take the image to ensure that that will be the highest quality. So let's get started by talking about the mantra for quality. It's pretty simple, and it is garbage in, garbage out. If you begin with poor quality, the best you can hope to achieve is a poor quality product with icing on it. And this is true not only in the creative process, this is true in anything you do. Starting with the best possible quality and doing your very best at every step of, in this case, the creative process, but anything you do in life will result in the best possible finished product. You give it all you got, that's all you can do. And you, you start with the best you can and work it all the way along and you'll get the best out. Now, quality begins in the case of what we're dealing with, Photoshop Elements. It begins with your photograph. Now, digital cameras today, like this one I have here, all of them shoot two different format choices. You can choose to shoot a JPEG or you can choose to shoot a RAW file. And I will explain the difference between the two. Let's start by talking about the RAW file itself. The RAW file is exactly what the sensor captured inside of your camera, period. This gives you the maximum number of pixels and no compression loss whatsoever. It's the best the camera has to offer right there. The secondary option is a JPEG. JPEG is a very common format. This is what your images on the internet are all mostly JPEGs. And JPEG is a file format that compresses the file to make it smaller. So in other words, the same file that was a raw that was captured by the sensor will be taken in JPEG format and compressed. And the more, and what it is, it's a lossy compression. In other words, it loses data because as it compresses it, it throws away some data. The more it compresses, the more it throws away. So when you open it back up, what happens is the computer has to fill in the blanks and sometimes it misses spots here and there. It just will. That's just the way it is. It can't get them all back. It has to fake it. So you begin to get a little degradation and you see it in color noise. The more you compress it, the more data that's thrown away, the more noise and degradation you're going to get. So if you're going to shoot JPEG at all, which there's nothing wrong with it, shoot it at the minimal amount of compression so that you do not lose, that you lose as little data as possible. And if you at all can, shoot raw. The other thing about JPEG is whether you have any internal settings set to make corrections to your image in the camera, and I suggest don't. Do it in elements. That's what it's for. When it takes the image, it does exposure, sharpening, and color corrections to your image automatically to the pixels. So it's what you see is already altered slightly, whereas the raw file is absolutely unchanged, and you get to work it any way you want to and starting with the best raw works. The other thing about JPEG is the sensor has a range of exposure that it can capture. In other words, that's the light all the way up into the brights and down into the real dark shadows. JPEG, the range is smaller than the raw file. So automatically, even if there was no compression or no corrections 
the range of light and the range of exposure in a JPEG is smaller than that is in a RAW file. So if you start to work on your image and you're trying to pull detail out of the brights or the darks, you are restricted with a JPEG. So I recommend, if at all possible, work with a RAW file.